Hey, what's up? This is Anthony with AGK Exotics, and today we're going to try to finish up this project here. Uh, so what happened was I cut the acrylic for this other one and glued it in and thought I was filming, but it I filled my uh, memory and so I missed all of that. But I got another 10 gallon and I'm planning to uh, set it up to uh, either make it a vertical or a horizontal setup, I'm not sure yet. Um, if I do a horizontal, I'll have a, a dual opening door kind of setup thing going on. Should be pretty cool. But either way, I need to cut the acrylic to have it first fit this. Um, the first one I cut, I cut it exact size and it was, I put it in there once to see if it fit and I could barely get it out. Uh, it was quite a pain in the butt. So uh, this one I'm cutting it like uh, 30 second shorter than what it than what the dimensions are so it uh, has a little bit of play in there as you can see I've already done the up and down and you, there's a little teeny bit of play which that will give enough room for the hinge and all that kind of stuff too so now we're going to cut long ways here and uh, Show you how I'm gonna cut it. Alright, so the width of the enclosure's lid is nine and three quarters, so we're gonna make it a little bit shorter than that. Here, I'm gonna find the cut that was made by the store, which was very rough. They told me their machine is uh, pretty bad, and it is. The cuts that it made are quite off. It varies maybe a half inch towards one end to the other. But that's okay because uh, the piece I was using is a 20 by 32 inch. And that gives you two inches of play, um, or two and a half, maybe three inches of play, uh, to make these, to make three of them out of one piece. And this is a tenth of an inch. So this is the factory cut, I'm going to keep that cut, and this is the store's cut, the Ace Hardware cut, I'm going to cut that one off. quarters and I'm gonna take it just a little bit shorter than that. Just taking like a millimeter off of the nine and three quarters and that will give enough. These uh, clamps I got here are not really the greatest size, they're pretty small, so I really got to get it just right for it to work. So it takes a little bit of finagling to get it right. I think like that. Let's take this one over here and see what we can come up with. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. 
let's do it on the back side of this one. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good to me. Now you're going to take your cutter. This is one of those uh, Lexan cutters. Lexan plexiglass cutters. It takes a little bit of time, but it's a clean cut when you're done. Just got to be patient. And it should be like that if you got a clean slice, if you got the right angle. Because you're removing that much material. Check the depth. Stick your nail in there or something. Oh yeah, I probably took half this material off here. Alright, I just want to make sure the ends are cleaned out good. So it's a clean break on the ends. And actually, that side's pretty clean. I've been going off that end most of the time. Yep, I think we're good. So, turn it over. Flat over a straight edge on the part you're breaking there. Press down pretty good and pop up. There we go. Clean break. Looks good too. Yeah. Alright. I guess we'll uh, pop it in to see. How it fits. Alright, here's that piece that we just cut. Now we're gonna pop it in to see how it fits. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah, this one's what's meant. It's much better than the other one I did. Okay, so I've completed my other cuts. I am doing a three inch on the bottom and two inches on the top. And now I'm gonna glue these in place with this DAP all-purpose uh, adhesive sealant. It doesn't say anywhere on here that it sticks to plastic, um, but it's it seems to be working so far. Just you don't want to be tugging on it or <laughs> picking it up by the, the door or anything like that. Um, make sure when you're doing this to make sure it say it sticks to plastic. So far, it's working. All right, so I'm gonna peel the bottom part off here. Make sure your plastic is not underneath where you're gluing. Alright. Now I'm going to run a bead of this along here. Oh, I didn't quite get it coming out right. <laughs> Let's see. It's been sitting here for like five minutes since I reopened it. All right, let me come back to get this flowing. Okay, got it opened up again. I didn't get the plug all the way out last time. Now the opening is pretty big, so I don't know if it's going to make it all the way around. At least not to the top and the bottom. I have to get some more to the top. That's alright. Oh no, it's doing pretty good. I'll be able to use this on both top and bottom. down and then after we get the top and bottom glued in we will put something on it to hold it down tight so here's the top
top part. Let's make sure this is the right way so it fits in there nicely. to make sure you don't glue it in between it and the, the rim of your aquarium. That's kind of a big mess there. Dogs over here being grumpy. I don't know why this is not coming out again. <laughs> oh, I'm having such trouble with this old tube. Use a fresh tube every time. Well, for some reason, the tube will not work. <laughs> Can't figure it out. But we'll use this little messed up Allen wrench here. Maybe we got it. <laughs> Flowing. I don't know what was up with that. That's all right. Nothing but trouble with this one. I know I got way too much on there. Try to remove some here. <laughs> this is a mess. That's all right. Can't always be perfect on camera, right? It'll be really glued on there, though. Okay, let's get the piece and lay it in there. See, we got kind of a mess going here. We're gonna get a towel and kind of wipe up the extra stuff before it hardens up. There we go, looks pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna put something on there to hold it down, and then when it's dry, we'll do our holes. Okay, it's the next day. Our top panel and our bottom panel are dried in place. Now we're going to put our marks down for where our holes are going to be drilled. So I have a pattern made up here that I'm going to be using. It's nine holes. And so I'm going to mark these real quick. This is the top panel. I'm going to have nine holes in the top panel and uh, no holes in the bottom panel but I'll have nine holes also in the, the bottom of the door. That's so that I'll get airflow coming in from the bottom and going out the top. All right, so that's where those marks go. Now this is also the top right here where I'm going to be adding in a latch. Mark where that is going to be drilled. Right there. Now let's spin this around and do the hole, holes for the bottom of the door. And the way I have this pattern set up, it works for all of the different areas. So now I just rotate it around and now I do the bottom holes for the door.
Now we got those on there. Now we can do our pilot holes using our Dremel tool. Okay, all of our pilot holes are in, ready to go. And now we'll break out the bigger drill and drill the holes. All right, I'm gonna be drilling this with a stepper bit because that seems to be the safest way to drill this that I'm using so far. I'm gonna be doing five eighths holes. And I may go bigger later on, but that seems to be okay. Seems like it's gonna work. Now, if you press too hard with this, you will definitely crack this material. The first one I did cracked a bit. I'll still be using it, but it doesn't look the best. All right. Oh, and another uh, good thing to do when you're using a stepper bit that goes past the size that you're going to be stopping at, it's good to use some electrical tape or something like that to tape off the next, the next size that would be drilling so you don't go too far. finish these holes up. I'll get back to you when I'm done with that. Okay, got the holes for the top piece and the bottom of the door. Now I need to do the one right here, which is for the latch, and that needs to be three quarters of an inch. all the way through. All right, we have all of our holes drilled and it's sitting in place. And now we're going to add our six inch hinge, acrylic hinge, it's gonna go right there. And then we have this little latch lock deal. And that's gonna go up here in the top. So what we're gonna do is, all right, so what we're gonna do is get our straight edge and not put it on that corner. <laughs> I have so much overflow over here that that's not a straight edge anymore. So take your straight edge and uh, set it up so it's against your edge here and I'm gonna get my hinge lined up 
with the center of the hinge on the crack that's open here. Once I feel it's about centered, then I'll center it in these two holes, which happens to line up perfectly with this. There we go. And once we're, once it's in place, when I'm happy with it, get some tape and I'll tape it down on one of the sides here. go. Now what I can do is I can glue this side down that's not taped. And so what I'm going to be using is this acrylic cement. Uh, I believe it's, yeah, it's by Tap Plastics. And also these other plastic parts are also by Tap Plastics. They're fairly inexpensive. This is $1.90. And I think this was a couple bucks. I'll have to recheck that. All right, so the way this cement works is you put a lot on it and you hold it down. <laughs> I tried putting it a little bit on it before and it didn't really do anything. It's very thin. It does come with an applicator you're supposed to use. I mean, uh, you, could, you, could, you can get an applicator for it, but I didn't get the applicator. Probably should have. It's a little syringe. And I believe what you do is you hold, put it down and then you squirt it underneath it and it wicks underneath. It's the way it's designed. But we don't have that, so we'll just do our best to do it the way we're going to do it. I'm going to double check this lined up here. So I'm going to use a Q-tip to, to apply this stuff. It's going to put a lot down where the hinge is going to go. What this does is actually melts the acrylics together, or the plastics, whatever. So I've got quite a lot on there. And a bunch on the hinge. All right. Make two edges and hold it down. This stuff works very fast. It's going to melt the two plastics together. So let me get something to put some weight on this. Now while that's drying, we'll move on to the other part, which is the, the latch here. And so we're going to put a bunch around the rim and some are on there and then put them together. some on this real quick. Alright, I'm going to put this on here. I'm trying to put some decent pressure on it. I really can't do it though. It's That's alright. We'll just press down and make it bow a bit.
All right, looks like we're already attached on this end. So I'm gonna spin this back around. And then we'll do the other part of the hand drill. Like enough. Let's hold that down. All right, and that's pretty much it. After it's dried completely, we'll check it out and we'll see how it works and we'll finish putting the latch together. Okay, here's them done. This one's kind of hard to see because there's nothing in the back of it, but and the key comes out, so now it's locked. Go like that, and the key stays in. This is the one we just did. So yeah, so that's it. So that uh, finishes up. Um, I think this is like part three of this uh, um, naturalistic uh, tarantula enclosure. Um, next we'll be adding in um, our uh, drainage layer, our soil, and our decoration, and then rehousing. housing All right, so thanks for joining us on this, and we'll see you next time for, I believe, part four.